Hello and welcome to the June webinar for Zarbio. Uh, today we will be going through field manager and fungicides, the solution to simply smarter crop production. Uh, my name is Cale Briggs. I am the Zarbio commercial manager for Canada. And uh, today I'll be taking you through different variations of what can be done within a uh, Zarbio field manager, as well as some of the benefits of using these tools. So today we'll get going here. There will be time at the end for any questions uh, that I will be able to answer. So please, uh, during the duration of today's webinar, feel free to, to post any questions into the chat. So just looking at an overview of Zarbio Field Manager, I'll give you a brief introduction as to what it is. Zarbio Field Manager is the crop optimization platform uh, for Zarbio. We like to look at that we have four different areas that we can really focus on with the field manager platform here that'll take you through your season and give you a very holistic approach to how you can manage your crop production throughout the year. So we, we have tools that can help you with seeding, fertilizing, crop protection, and analysis. Uh, when it comes to seeding, we do have the ability to help you uh, create variable rate prescriptions um, and really hone in on the benefits of trying to do different approaches to seeding your field. Uh, when it comes to fertilization, we offer variable rate prescriptions for fertilizer that can be sent to any variation of machinery that can be utilized at different parts of the season as you see fit. Uh, for crop protection, which is actually what we'll be focusing on today, we offer our zone spray prescriptions as well as several tools such as our spray timing and spray weather. And then finally, we have our analysis at the end of the season, which we have uh, tools that can help you perform the analytics of what you've accomplished throughout the season to see if those decisions that you uh, made throughout the, uh, the season have paid off. As I mentioned, uh, today we'll be going through uh, crop protection and how we work with several tools within the field manager platform. And we'll be first, we'll start by going through farm and field creation. So how to actually set yourself up to work throughout the season. Um, if you attended our spring webinar earlier in April, we did go through some of this, but it's always a good to set the basis for how you're going to set yourself up going through the season. Um, in addition to this, we'll be going through how to modify, modify your seeding date and your growth stages as throughout the season, this, uh, your growth stage might change. You might need to adjust to help drive some of the tools and features of our platform. We'll go through in-season imagery, so you'll be able to see the benefits and the use of our uh, imagery that we offer within Zarbio Field Manager. We'll go through our weather features as well as our spray timer, which is very useful for this time of year to help you hone in on those, those select times when it'll be optimal for you to spray your fields. Uh, we'll be going through our zone spray fungicide prescription creation. Uh, this will take us through how to create one of our on-off prescriptions to help you really help optimize your spraying of your fungicides uh, when it comes to time later this uh, season. And then finally, we'll go through downloading and sending prescription files um, and focusing on how we can actually optimize and integrate with John Deere Operations Center and how Zarbio Field Manager and Operations Center can work together and help uh, make a seamless uh, data transferring for you to really help you throughout the season. So now we'll jump into uh, Zarvio Field Manager here. Right. Perfect. So yeah, so now you can see we're here at the landing page for Zarvio Field Manager. So this is after you've logged in. Um, if you uh, haven't created an account, it's very easy to do so. You just have to enter your email and create a password and you'll get access to the Zarvio Field Manager uh, platform. Um, I will point out that uh, when you first sign up, you do get two free fields to utilize all the features throughout the season. Um, so the first two fields that you will create, you'll get access to those uh, all the features. Um, and so I highly recommend if you haven't done so before to sign up and give it a try. But we'll get going here. And so we'll take you through kind of the basis of how to set everything up throughout the season here. Um, so the core of everything is built off of uh, your, your normal structure. So you have your farm and your fields and underneath the farm. So step one is we'll go ahead and create a farm here. Um, you can do that by clicking in this uh, in the top left of the screen here. I already have some farms created as you can see, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new farm for this webinar. So we'll go to uh, this drop down here and there's a little button that says add new farm. 
And so what the farm is, is this is just a way for you to organize your fields. So whether you have one farm that you want to keep all your fields in, or maybe multiple farms, you have different uh, different groups of fields across uh, across your area, and you might manage them differently. Well, you can set up individual farms, or you can set up one big farm. So for this, I'm just going to, uh, after creating, after choosing the button there to add a new farm, I'm just going to call this uh, June webinar, and it's going to, you're just naming what this farm is going to be. I'm going to hit save. And now you can see that I've created this new farm and it always tells you what farm you're in up here in the top left of the screen. This is the June webinar farm. And right now I don't have any fields created. So that's the next step that we need to do to, to get things going here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add, add a field here by selecting this add fields button. And it takes you to this screen here. And so there's different ways that you can create fields within Field Manager. You can select or draw them. We have some automatically detected uh, field boundaries that you can select from, or you can draw your own. If you have uh, pre-existing uh, boundary files from, say, uh, your equipment uh, um, or another program, you would be able to upload those shape files or KMZ files here uh, to the Field Manager platform. And finally, you can actually import fields from um, other data management uh, systems. So in our case in Canada here, we can actually integrate with John Deere Operations Center to uh, bring in uh, boundaries that way. And so I'll, I'll show you briefly here. If you do have a connection to John Deere Operations Center, you can click this. And you'd actually be able to, uh, once you've integrated your John Deere Operations Center account, you can choose the organization, you can choose the farm. And you can see any of the boundaries that you have within John Deere Operations Center can be imported here into Field Manager. So it gives you a nice, quick, easy way to start. But we'll go back here to show you the other two options uh, of selecting or drawing your field boundaries. So I'll start by going here. Um, and to start, I mean, you can see it's going to take you just to a search page here. I'm going to type in, uh, you can type in the closest town to where you are or where you might want to create a field for. And so as you can see, I, I, I chose Gibbons, Alberta, because that's where the area that I'm from. And uh, it zoomed in on that area and you can see all these white kind of lines around here. Well, these are uh, pre-existing detected boundaries that we actually populate into Field Manager here. So you can actually uh, go, I, I'm just gonna choose this field here for the sake of this. You can see this field has already been already uh, pre-drawn um, and you can select this. And I'm just going to give this a name as a uh, June one. And it's just going to ask you to put your uh, your your name for your field in there. Um, if you want to edit these pre done boundaries, you can you can hit edit shape here and it gives you the option to maybe drag around some of these points here, um, draw different areas in. It just gives you the ability to to really kind of optimize and to to tweak the boundary as you see fit. I think this one's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do this one going to have it as June 1st there, and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Okay, so that creates one field there. So now I'm going to just show you real quick the other way you can actually draw a boundary. So we're going to go add fields, select or draw, and you can see now it's actually because I've established one boundary already, it's taking me into that the general area of where that field is. So I'm going to say I have a field just across the way here, um, but uh, I don't really like how this one's drawn, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose draw down here at the bottom. And by doing that, you can see those white lines kind of all disappear, and this enables you to to draw the boundary as you see fit. So if I only want to draw this one area here, you can just start going around using the uh, the the background imagery here to try to guide you into how you want to maybe draw that boundary. So I'm just going to make a nice quick one here. Might not be the best, but it's going to be good to get us going here. Perfect. So I'm just drawing around the, the exterior of the boundary there. To close it off, you're just going to select this first point. It's, it closes that boundary. You're good to go. Um, if you need to draw any cutouts in the field, if you have any, like a, a, a slew that you don't want included in the boundary or anything like that, looks like there might be a slew or something right here. I'm going to hit cut out. And now I can actually go ahead and draw around that area just by clicking around this area here and the same as drawing on the outside you'll be able to just close off that boundary and as you can see it now cuts it out i'm going to hit done because i have the boundary that i want and now there's my boundary it's showing up in blue there and i'm just going to call this june 2. 
All right, perfect. So I have two fields in there now, and that's how you create fields. So I created a farm just by going up here and adding a new farm. And then I created fields by choosing this add fields button. I chose one through the auto detected boundary. Um, and then I also drew my own. Um, so that's those are just some of the ways that you can get boundaries going. And the one thing, the reason I want to go through boundaries here is because honestly, a boundary is probably one of the most important pieces of what we need to do to utilize the functions within field manager. So uh, to have the best outcome, we want to probably have the best boundaries. That mean that might mean taking a little bit more time to try to make sure that things are only included within the boundary that are the areas that you farm. Um, and that you're not just maybe drawing just a, a generalized box across the field because it might include some things that might make some of our our uh, our tools not work as well. So we want to try and get as nice clean boundary as possible. All right. So now that I've created uh, uh, fields, the next thing we need to do is we need to we need to activate these fields. We need to assign crops to them. So. So in order to get access to our features and our tools, we actually need to make sure that they have an, what we call an active crop season. So to do that, I'm going to now still in the status screen here, you have your fields over, uh, over here on the side. I'm gonna select this June 1 field. And as you can see, it's gonna highlight the field. It takes me into some views here. And then there's this button down here called assign crop. This is the important piece what we have to do to set our crop season. So select assign crop. And now a list of different crop types come up. These are the crops that we have in, uh, entered here for uh, Canada to use. Um, you, you can notice that there's these uh, purple X's next to some of the crops here. These are what we'll call our timing crops. And what these timing crops offer is that these are the crops that we are able to provide you risk predictions, uh, growth stage forecasts, and, and different types of recommendations to. So these are the ones that uh, you'll find the most uh, features for uh, within Zarveal Field Manager. So for this one, I'm going to choose canola. All right, and now you can see it's taking me to this next page here. And so it's going to actually ask me for what variety I'm growing on that field. And I'm just going to say I'm growing uh, L233P. Perfect. My seeding date. So if you set this ahead of time, or if, you're, or, if you, or if you're setting this in the springtime, you might not know your seeding date. I'll show you how to change that later. But now that we're kind of past the growing season, I'm going to say that I got in the field and I seeded this on May 26th. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can put your expected yield or, or what you're hoping to achieve for this year. And I'm going to hit continue. A couple more questions it's going to ask what the previous crop was. I'm just going to say it was peas last year. And uh, in terms of tillage, it was no till. So it's just going to ask you what your tillage practice is. And you're going to save crop. All right, so now you can see that we've already, the screen has changed now that I've set a crop type. It's now showing up that it's canola. A few more things have showed up, which we'll get into in a little bit here. But that's how you go ahead and uh, assign a crop to make an active crop season. The next thing we're going to go through, um, as I kind of mentioned before, you, you might have set this earlier in the spring and you uh, may not have put the correct seeding date in or you might need to change that. Well, you can go ahead and do that. And, and it's really important because a lot of the tools and the features that we have here in Zarvio Field Manager, they use the growth stage models that, that we have within our Zarvio agronomic decision engine. Um, and so it's really important to try to make these things as accurate as possible so that you're able to optimize your field for the best timing and all these different uh, features uh, throughout the season. So I'm going to say, OK, well, actually, it wasn't May 26 when I seeded my field here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit change seeding date. Just here at the top bar, you can see there's some options up here. I'm going to hit change seeding date. And their little note will pop up here saying that changing the seeding date will affect the calculations for this field, which uh, the, in a, it, it's, it's just letting you know that, but that's a good thing. It's, it's helping you kind of improve how things are going just to make sure it's as accurate as possible. So I'm going to say, actually, I didn't actually see that field to the 28th. So I'm going to, as you see here on the calendar, I'm just going to select that May 28th. I'm going to hit save. And now it's going to change that. And things will kind of adjust accordingly based upon that seeding date that you've now changed. Well, in addition to the seeding date, we do use the growth stage to really uh, kind of fuel some of the, the features that we have in Zarvio Field Manager. So you can see here that the, the uh, growth stages are listed um, here um, on this kind of chart here. Um, it also, if we go to full view here, if I select this, this field status full view, you'll actually be able to see 
uh, the estimations of the growth stage based upon the growth stage model that we have, based upon your seeding date, the variety, um, and environmental factors will affect this as well. But you can see that there's different growth stages. We're at BBCH5 on this date, hopefully, and it's just kind of go going to go along there. But say that you don't agree with where the growth stage is within uh, within field manager. So maybe right now it's saying right now here it's saying uh, BBCH10 today on Friday, uh, June 10th. And you may not agree with that. Maybe maybe the, the weather caused some some delays in the, the development of the crop and you need to change that to help correct the the, the the model here. So to do that, there's actually an option up here to modify the growth stage. So you can select that and it's going to ask you for the observation observation date. So it's just going to ask you when you made this observation. So whether it's you, if you're out scouting your fields and you notice that, OK, this crop isn't as far along as it's saying, or maybe you have a, a, an agronomist or advisor or crop scout who you work with and they let you know that, you know what, it's actually not and it's not showing what uh, this is showing. It might be maybe it's a stage behind. Well, we can adjust that. So we're going to go to the observed growth stage. I'm going to say that yesterday someone was on the field and they said, you know what? It just it, we're we're, we're going to go back. It's only it's only just a merge. We're just going to go here. We're going to go BBCH9. We're going to hit save. And what that's going to now do is just going to adjust. It's going to adjust to the, the growth stage a bit um, and it's going to make this observation. Um, so that it's letting the system know that okay, we observed that it actually there's a, a change in the growth stage, and it's gonna uh, it's going to adjust uh, the features and everything in the background accordingly to these observations that you're making. So I showed you on that full view screen there that you can change the modify growth stage, but you can actually do it here, right next to where there's the changing seed date. There is an option for modifying growth stage as well, so you would be able to just do that um, here as well. All right, so 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 far we've gone through creating a farm, um, adding some fields, um, assigning our crop type. So we created an active crop season here, and then we were able to modify our seeding date and our growth stage. Well, what, what the next thing I want to go through is actually our in-season imagery or our biomass maps. And so to do that, I'm going to actually jump to another farm. So in order to get biomass maps or in-season uh, imagery, you actually do have to have a crop assigned to a field. That's the way that it becomes active and that uh, images are able to populate for a field. Uh, the one thing that I will let you know is that um, once a, a crop season is set for your field, it may take uh, a few weeks for images to start to populate. Um, it's waiting for uh, a few weeks after the seed, the actual seeding date occurs for images to start to populate. So you might have to give it some time for those to actually start appearing in your account, um, but then you should start seeing them populate and they'll, they'll show up as what we call biomass maps. And so as you can see here, it populates right into this screen here. You'll see this is just the most recent biomass map shown here. And so what these biomass maps are is that they're, they're high resolution, vegetation maps that are based on satellite imagery. Um, so throughout the growing season, these, image, these images will populate when there's a cloud free image that is captured uh, for, for each field that has a crop season entered for it. Um, and so uh, the way that these images work, if there's cloud cover or maybe there's a shadow cast over a field at the time that a satellite might be moving over top of it and, and taking that, 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 that picture of the field, um, if that's the case, we will not include that because it will not be giving accurate data to you. So we only include images where there are there's no uh, no hindrances on the, the the quality of the image and that it's cloud free and shadow free. And so you might see sometimes uh, some some uh, days, maybe a week or more go by without images, and it, it, it's it's going to be due to those uh, those factors that are are out of the out of our control. But when we do find images coming through here, you'll you'll notice that they do highlight things within the field here. And so we actually have two types of uh, biomass maps. So as you can see from the drop down here, we have our biomass maps here. And these are the best ones to use within the season. They give you that 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 snapshot of what's happening throughout the season. And so, like I said, there's two views. We have one called the contrast view and, a, uh, and the other one's called the compare view. And so there's this little icon over on the side of the screen here. If you click this, you'll see there's contrast coloring and compare coloring. So they show you two different things here. 
And what they are is so first here we're looking at contrast coloring and so this map will show the relative difference in each field uh, always showing the, the the highest and lowest biomass areas uh, zones within a field um, all relative to each other so it's a great map for for kind of uh, giving that snapshot of what's happening within the season so you can say hey, this, this is the lowest, the, the, according to this map, this is the lowest biomass area of my field right now, um, or this is the highest one, and you can kind of scout based upon this. You can see, you can detect changes. Um, you'll be able to just visually see what's happening in the field. Then there's the compare coloring, and what this is, is this is more of an absolute view. So using leaf area index, or LAI, this gives you a, an absolute value of where the crop is at um, with a hard number um, for that point of the season. So this is actually a way of, well, where you can actually compare this to other fields. So if you have, for this case, this is a spring wheat field I'm looking at here. If you have another spring wheat field that's close by that was seeded with it, like in a, in a relatively the same time frame, you would be able to then compare. Well, this field's at this uh, this stage. This one's at this stage based upon these LAI values. So it gives you that chance to compare to each other. Um, there's different use cases for each. Um, this co this contrast one really gives you the best view of what's happening within that field itself, so you can start to really dig in and maybe uh, help optimize and make some decisions about what you might be seeing there. And so, like I said, to change that, it'll just be over here um, on this little icon here. You can look, toggle between the two. And so there's actually this other option here. If you click on the date up here, you'll actually be able to bring up all of the different images that have been captured throughout the growing season so far. So you can actually do kind of a, a comparison based upon how many days ago to see what the field does look like, how it might be changing and just get a, those types of views. And then so I mean, I might want to go see the one that was captured nine days ago. And all you have to do is click on that. If you want to see the latest image, you can hit latest here and it'll take you to it. Perfect. All right, so moving on now, now that we've gone through our in-season imagery and our biomass maps here, we'll take you through some of our, 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 our risk tools, uh, our spray timing tools, our weather tools, some of the things that uh, are very powerful within the Zarville Field Manager platform here. Um, a lot of them are driven off of the growth stage that you set, the seeding date, so it's very important to make sure that those are as accurate as possible. Um, and yeah, so We'll look here just at this quick snapshot. So on the status screen, you'll see there's kind of a, there's a few different things that you're able to see here. Um, there was the icons we were able to use before to modify the growth stage and change the seeding date. But there's also a field status here, which will show the disease and the growth stage, as well as weather and climate. These are some of the features that we'll look at here. We've already gone through growth stage. So we'll just kind of give you the, the overview of where you're, where your field's at according to our growth stage models. But now you can see that there's actually these disease risks. Um, and so just in a quick view here, you can actually see, um, so this is a spring wheat crop. It's gonna highlight some, some potential diseases that may occur in your area with this crop type. And so you're able to kind of get the snapshot on what might be happening on the field there. If you, if you ever hover over this question mark or any of the question marks within the platform here, you'll notice that an explanation will come up. And so, for the disease forecast or the disease risk here, it's forecasting the uh, infestation risk um, um, based upon the weather, the field, the, the growth stage, all that information will, will be what determines the risk factor for these fields, but you'll be able to see that they come in different levels. So uh, right now, because we're a little early in the season here, um, it's showing that it's out of season, but that starting on June 14th, we're gonna be at low risk for certain diseases, medium risk, and then there's high risk as well. And so actually, I'm just going to go, if you ever hit this full view here, we're going to hit full view, and it's going to take you into a more in-depth look uh, to look at the disease risk here. All right, so now you can see, for this field here, if I just expand, just by clicking on this, uh, this pointed arrow here, if I do that, it's going to expand uh, a more in-depth look of what's happening within the field here. And so it's still looking ahead and it's showing you what's happened before the risk levels as well. 
but it's going to break down these different uh, diseases that you might come across throughout the season. And it's going to tell you the risk of what they are. And so if you have like, if you look here, this is showing that it's low risk because it's green. Once again, if you hover over here, it'll give you an explanation of what each of these icons may mean. Um, where there's, there could be a low infection risk, a medium infection risk, a high infection risk. Um, there's just different risks for you to really kind of look at what's going on in the season. You can, you can move a little further on as well. Um, you can customize how you're looking at the dates and stuff so you can kind of see what's happening. But we moving on to the, the next uh, dates there, you can see it's only gone as far as June 15th here, but it is showing some of the risk there. So that is one of the features that you're able to look at here. Um, so just switching over to uh, uh, another crop type here, let's go down to go down to this one here. I have this one set as a soybean field here, so you can see it's kind of changed some of the the different diseases here and shows different risk levels as well. All right. So now that we've gone through uh, the, the way that you can view disease risks on a field, and I mean, uh, you can just toggle through and you'll be able to see this canola field. It is showing that there's there's no specific diseases necessarily labeled here, but based on conditions and the growth stage, it's going to highlight when those windows are for the, the greatest chance of, or the greatest risk of disease. But uh, on corn here, you'll see that there is as well, um, you'll be able to look at the, the different diseases and those sorts of things. So we'll move now into uh, our, our weather and our spray timing tools. And these are some of the features that can really help optimize uh, the decisions that you're making throughout the season. And so I'm going to move over at the top here. You can see there's a weather, ta uh, a weather icon. If you click this, it's going to take you to the weather screen. But before I jump there, uh, you'll be able to see, as I mentioned before, this kind of quick snapshot here, this quick view uh, gives you the brief summary of what's happening on your field. There's a weather and climate tab as well. Um, and this is just going to give you that four day window. So today and then the following three days as to what the uh, the weather forecast is and the spray weather forecast is as well. That's what these little bars correspond to here. Um, they just show you what the different level of uh, the timing, uh, the optimal timing for you to spray a field. Um, and so we'll we'll go over to the weather and climate field to look at this a little deeper here. And so by clicking on this weather and climate, you can get, go there, uh, you can get to that screen by clicking here or at the weather tab here on top. But I'm just going to click weather and climate. All right, and so now that I'm at the we the weather page here, it's actually at the farm level right now. You can see it says farm weather, and it's just kind of giving you a general weather forecast for your area, as well as a general uh, historical weather and climate um, outlook for your uh, for the area of your farm as well. But if I want to look at one specific field here, um, I'm going to click on this field here. And it changes the screen a bit, so you do have a radar up here that zooms in on the field so you can kind of see that. But you can see now that uh, it's really focusing more so just on this field. So it's broken down into different parts on the screen. We have our hourly spray weather, our 10 day spray weather forecast, as well as we still have the historical weather and climate and precipitation um, charts that we can look at as well. But right now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at uh, the spray weather. And so what this is, is that the spray weather gives us the best forecast for optimal spraying conditions for this exact field here. So it goes on an hour by hour basis for the, the, the time around you here, and it's color coded so that you're going to see that there's going to be uh, orange suboptimal, there's red, which are bad treatment conditions, and there will be green as well during certain times. And those green ones are gonna be the optimal times to spray. And what it's taking into account here, it's taking into the, the temperature outside, the forecasted precipitation, the wind speed and direction, as well as the, the humidity percentage uh, is taken into account as well. And so based on those factors for this field, it's going to give you the best windows that we're predicting for you to spray your field. So, uh, of course, it's going to be uh, the closer to the time is going to give you the most accurate, accurate for spray forecast. But we are able to look about 10 days out based upon our longer range forecasting to determine when what days might be the best for you to start looking at or thinking about spraying. And so, as you can see, looking outside of the 
hourly uh, spray weather and looking more at the 10 day forecast, you can kind of see we're looking ahead and it's going to look at the different conditions that might be a play and you'll see that it's going to really break down the different windows and when you might be able to spray. And so, you, as I mentioned, there's the red for uh, the the poor conditions, suboptimal and orange, and then we're going to have some good conditions here in the green. And you can scroll along here just by clicking this arrow and it'll take you into the next days leading up to the 10 days from where you are right now. Um, but beyond that, uh, it'll just continue to update as it goes on um, through time. Um, yeah, so that that's the spray weather and the spray forecast. Um, yeah, you'll be able to well, if you ever hover on any of these bars here, it will give you uh, an explanation as to like why things might be good, why things might be suboptimal. Um, you can see it's suboptimal here because there's some predicted precipitation or there's a high wind speed. So that's it's going to give you somewhat of an explanation as to what the reason is as to why it's it's saying it's either suboptimal, good or poor. And then just a quick look here at the historical weather and climate. Uh, so yeah, here on the weather screen, you can actually start looking a little deeper as to what might be happening. So, um, so for example, right now, uh, maybe your canola crop is is not it's not as far along as you thought, uh, or there's might be certain things that have occurred um, since you've seeded your crops. Uh, well, you can you can start to hone in and look at some of these features as to what might be at play, whether it's uh, there's been some low overnight temperatures, um, there's been sort of some some abnormal precipitation. You can start looking at some of these different factors and start looking at what weather might actually be happening around this field um, to give you a better idea of what might actually be happening. And so you can actually customize. So right now it defaults to a five month period, but you can customize this and you can pick um, the past week, the past couple of days, you can look at it at different uh, at different levels. So it's all up to you to really customize um, how things are being looked at on these charts here. But it does give you the possibility to start digging into some of those uh, questions that you might have around um, why things are happening the way they are right now throughout the season. Perfect. So yeah, so as I mentioned, that's our spray weather and our timing all through our weather tab here. Um, that'll give you the best, uh, the best uh, uh, optimal chance of trying to spray within the best windows based upon our uh, the environmental conditions and our models to help guide you through this. But before I move past the weather screen, uh, I, I just wanted to point one thing out here. While we have very good and very accurate weather data, it can always be better. You can always get even more focused. And so, to optimize even further the different uh, capabilities of our weather data, we can actually connect to weather stations. And so currently we connect through two weather providers, uh, Metos Canada by Pestle stations are supported, as well as arable weather stations are supported and they can be connected to your account. And once those are, the, the data received from those weather stations will actually feed into all of our algorithms and all of our models to help adjust them even further to give you the best chance of success uh, for your area based upon uh, our, our tools that we have for you here in Zarbio Field Manager. So you really can get hyper local and even more uh, even more focused by including weather stations um, um, into your operation here uh, in Field Manager. So we highly recommend their use because they can really help you uh, optimize your 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 uh, processes even better. All right. So now we've gone through the spray weather and timing. We're going to move into a zone spray fungicide prescription. Just going to go back to the main screen here real quick. All right. So what we're going to look at now is our zone spray fungicide creation. And so what zone spray is, it's uh, it's Zarvio's on and off fungicide prescriptions. Um, and what these uh, what these are aimed to do is they're they're there to help you save by only spraying where it pays. So we're focusing on spraying the higher biomass areas um, that will give you the best chance at a, a return on your investment for fungicide prescription. Um, so uh, the feedback we often get is that people are on the fence about fungicide prescription or fungicide application. Um, is it really going to pay them back? Well, a tool like this is great because it's actually going to help you only focus on the areas that. Uh, that are really going to give you that be that best payback, and those are going to be the, your uh, your most productive areas of your field. 
So to create a zone spray fungicide prescription, uh, first step, we need to have an active crop season, which, uh, which I've taken you through the steps there. Um, but beyond that, we'll just go ahead and we'll create one of those. So to create a uh, zone spray prescription, you're going to hit add task here. Um, this icon here is then going to pop up and it's, it's going to ask you, what do you want to do? And well, today, like this whole webinar, we're focusing on our crop protection for the most part. We want to click that option there, crop protection. And then it takes it to the screen here. And as you can see, it's going to ask you for your application date, but you're also going to notice that what we just went through is that your spray to windows are actually going to start to populate here too. And what this is going to help you do is that you might not know right, you might not know a week ahead of time whether you're, when when you're going to spray. But I mean, as it gets closer, you'll be able to look that okay, maybe uh, maybe Monday is the optimal time for me to spray. I know it's a bit early for us right now. We're only in the second week of June here, but uh, we can look a little further ahead to when we might want to apply the the fungicide. But uh, as you can see, if you go past a certain date, um, you're going to start losing those uh, forecasts because it's only a 10 day forecast that we give out there. But as the time moves along, you will see those populate. But for this case, let's just go with Thursday, June 16th. We're just going to put that in there for right now. And so once you have a date set there and you can also select a date just by entering it here or selecting on a calendar, but I'm going to use my our spray timing feature to help us guide that decision and I'm going to hit continue. All right, and now you can see that it's going to take you to this page here to uh, to select the product. And so we do have a, a large list of products here that are included from um, all different companies um, with the, that we have here in Canada. Um, and so you, if you know the product that you're going to use, uh, you can search it here. Um, if you want to look through the list of products, you can filter it. I'm going to say I want to look at fungicide product features. I wanted to make sure that I can on off this product. I'm going to hit apply. It's going to filter down, and then you're just going to have your list here of what uh, what products are available within our, our system here. But for me, I know I want to use Cotegra. This is my canola crop. I want to use Cotegra this year. I'm going to select that. And now I'm going to set my dosage. And so what this is doing is this is asking you, okay, well, what's your what's your mix going to be? What are you going to actually be applying? Well, how much is your active ingredient here? And so we're going to go off the label right here. We're going to go 0 0.25 liters per acre, and I want to only I want a total spray mixture of 10 gallons per acre, and so now it's going to take all that into consideration as to what my dosing is. Um, but you can see up here after setting your dosing, there's actually two types of application maps we can create. The first one is a flat rate map, and that would just be a blanket rate, uh, just a flat rate across your entire field based upon the field boundary or we can use our zone spray on off prescriptions. Um, and for this case, that's what we're going to do, because like I said, we want to use these maps to spray where it pays. All right, now I go to the next page here after uh, setting my dosage and where this gives you a summary page here. And so automatically it's just going to default to a certain map. Um, and what this is, that it's actually just going to take into account the most recent um, in-season biomass image to use because uh, what we found when with zone spray is that you always want to use the most recent usable image uh, to create these maps. Um, and so you can actually, if you if you wish to change maps, you can. You can go click on change map here, change source map. And this in for this field, there's only one map or one uh, biomass map listed right now. But if there is multiple, you'd be able to select which image you want to use. I'm going to select this map here, apply source map. And then the way that these maps work is that, as I mentioned, we call them on off because uh, it's as simple as that. We toggle on and off the, the on rate or they don't apply any fungicide in that certain area depending on the zone. And so it's broken down by the different zones here, starting from zone one to, and up to zone seven. And you can see it gives you the amount of acres, it gives you the percentage of the field um, to let you know that that's how much of that zone is actually going to be sprayed or not. And so each time you toggle on and off, you'll see the map will adjust accordingly. So if, you, if you've gone and scouted your field and you have the idea of where you might want to spray, you can say, well, I don't see a point in spraying zone three. We're going to save there. I'm going to toggle that off. And now you can see that the map is adjusted and it's, it's, it's increased that off area. 
And so if I do the same thing with zone four, it's going to you'll see that more of the the on rate disappears. And that's how it kind of updates and changes uh, by just toggling on and off. So I'm going to say we're going to turn zones four, five, six and seven on. That's how I want to apply this field here. And I'm going to go ahead and save that now. So yeah, just before saving, you just want to make sure that, OK, yes, I want my my off zones and they're toggled off. My on zones are toggled on and it does show if you hover here, it shows you it gives you the reminder of what the dose rate is, what the water volume is, the total amount. So you still have that idea for just uh, verifying and you can actually look at the source map as well. So you can compare it to the source map that's being utilized. So you can say, OK, yes, this is my high areas. Uh, my higher biomass areas according to the imagery here. These are my low areas that I don't want to spray and you can kind of compare the source map versus the application map here. And so once you've uh, once you're happy with how it looks, you can go ahead and hit save. And then it saves and updates everything on the page here. So you'll see that there's a bit of a breakdown you can have over here. It's telling you what uh, fungicide you're choosing to apply. The total amount of product uh, that you'd require, you'd be required. The total amount of water that's required for this whole uh, the application of this field based upon this prescription, and then finally based upon the zones, it gives you the treated and the untreated acres. So it tells you uh, the amount of area of the field and the total number of acres that you're planning to actually apply using the zone spray prescription here. And so once you're uh, satisfied with everything you see here, you can go ahead and save task. Perfect. So now that uh, you can see a little uh, a success pop up said that the application task has uh, been successfully saved to be able to view that now with this field selected. I'm going to make sure that yep, this field is selected here. I'm going to go over to tasks. And then now you can see that that one I created, I believe it was the 16th was the date. It is now showing up here for Cotegra fungicide crop protection task. If you click on it, it'll give you that summary that we saw before and you'll be able to look at it. You can change the date if you need to say that you you that as the days get closer, you decide, you know what? I don't think I'm going to spray until a few days later. You can go ahead and change that as well. And so that is how you create a zone spray prescription our our, our on off fungicide prescriptions here in the Zarvio field manager. So the next thing that you can do after creating your um, prescription is is the exporting of the prescription itself. So you have uh, you've gone ahead and created it and now it's the time has come that you want to actually use this map and you want to spray your field. Well, there's different ways that you can go about doing it. It's all done through this screen here. There's tasks. You have your uh, you have your your task selected here. Then there's this export icon down here at the bottom. When you select this here, you'll actually be able to see that there's different options that pop up here and it's asking you what do you want to do? Well, there's two ways that we can send these uh, prescriptions to our machines. One of them, if you are integrated with John Deere Operations Center, you can send that application map directly to John Deere Operations Center or directly to your sprayer itself. Um, but if you don't have John Deere uh, equipment or maybe you just don't have the, the setup with John Deere Operations Center, you can still do it by manually downloading these prescriptions to a USB and then uh, uploading those manually into the sprayer itself to be utilized. And so for this case, I'll just you know, give the example here. So for me, I'm going to say we have a John Deere sprayer. I'm connected through John Deere Operations Center. I'm going to go ahead and hit this option. And then it'll pop up here and it's, it's saying to send the map to John Deere Operations Center. You have to select the organization. This is what your uh, organization is called in John Deere Operations Center after it's been integrated. Going to select that there and then you'll actually see here that any machinery that you have connected to your John Deere Operations Center account will appear here as well. So I'm going to say this is my sprayer here and you can go ahead and select that and you can hit send map and it'll send that directly to your sprayer. And so I don't actually have a sprayer set up, so I wouldn't be able to check if it came through. But just for this example, you would be able to do it. You can send it directly to your machinery button and not have to go into Operations Center to actually physically send it. And so I'm going to continue on with this just to send it to Operations Center. 
All right, so it says that it's been sent to that organization and I do happen to have my John Deere Operations Center account open right now and I'm going to go and see. And there it is. So you can see I just sent that from um, Zarvio, a field manager, and it sent it right across to my John Deere Operations Center account. So here's that map. And then you could, if you need to, you can now select this and you can transfer it to equipment directly from John Deere Operations Center. So it's as seamless as that, as you can just do it in one click. It sends it right across and you're good to go from there. But as I said, not everyone has that, that capability, but you can still export it um, uh, manually and upload it with a USB. So you can download it as a, as a shape file if that's what your machine takes, or an ISO XML file if that's the way. And this will just download zipped uh, files for you to, um, to, to transfer to a USB device that can then be uploaded into uh, the, the monitors within your sprayers. All right, so that's taking you through the whole creation of zone spray and how to uh, take those maps and actually put them in action and utilize them. And so from there, um, the one thing I guess the, the the last thing I wanted to take you through here today is um, setting up that John Deere Operations Center um, integration. Um, as you can see, it's very important um, and it's it's very beneficial if you do have John Deere equipment that we do integrate very easily into the uh, into that platform that you can pull boundaries from it. You can send files to it, which we can also receive data from it. So any of the application maps that uh, uh, will load up into Operations Center after you've say used our zone spray map, um, you'll actually be able to receive that data into your field manager account here to view and visualize. And so to set up a John Deere integration, um, we're going to select uh, this icon over here. It says my name here, but it'll say yours or whoever's account it is. Um, but if you select that, it's going to take you to this page here. And then if you select connected services, you'll see that, OK, there's here's a John Deere icon. And for me, I'm already connected, but it'll ask you to you'll have the ability to hit connect. And what once that happens, once you hit connect, it's going to prompt you to log in to your uh, John Deere Operations Center account using those credentials. So you would just enter your username and your password for John Deere Operations Center, and then it'll it'll begin to establish that connection. The other piece to it is that you actually have to enable something on the John Deere Operations Center side. So once you've gone to connected services here, you've uh, hit connect and you've entered your information to connect your John Deere Operations Center account. You'll then go to John Deere Operations Center and there's actually a place to enable this connection. So under uh, with, on the John Deere uh, uh, Operations Center page, oftentimes you'll deal. This will be your landing page here, but you can go to set up here and then there's connections. And then once you get to this page here, you'll see a long list of different platforms and companies. And for me, I'm already connected, but if you scroll all the way to the bottom, Zarvio will show up here at the bottom, and then you'll just be able to uh, connect to that account, and then it'll allow for that data transferring between your two accounts. So it's as simple as that, a few easy clicks, and you'll be able to send data back and forth between Zarvio Field Manager and John Deere Operations Center. All right, so that takes us through our uh, demonstration portion here of uh, Zarvio field manager today. And so next, let me just share my screen here. Perfect. So yeah, as I mentioned, that took us through our um, our demonstration of Zarvio field manager and how we can utilize the features throughout the the, the growing season to help you optimize your timing to um, help you track your your, your growth stages, where your crop might be at, utilize our in-season imagery, as well as uh, sending our, our zone spray prescriptions to different types of machinery. And so uh, with that, um, we'll go into our pricing here. And so for Zarvio Field Manager, uh, to get the premium pr uh, subscription, it's $450 Canadian for, for one year. And what that does, that gives you all these features listed here. 
And so it gives you the field specific weather. It gives you your uh, your your crop protection time, your zone spray maps, unlimited acres, as many acres as that you operate. Um, you would be able to utilize all the features for for as many acres as you would, uh, as you would wish. Um, and so there's many different features included here. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, we do focus on four. We, we have four different focus areas. We focus on seeding, fertilization, crop protection and and analytics and those all those pieces are all included and the optimization is endless of what you can do within Zarvio field manager uh, for the price of 450 dollars canadian all right and so now uh if you have any questions please feel free to enter them into the chat um i believe i believe there are a couple um okay the first question here um okay so how do how do i get my prescriptions onto my sprayer if i don't have uh john deere um so as i mentioned you can utilize um the, the different file types they're able to download out of uh, uh zarvio field manager to get those prescriptions into your into your machinery and uh, they can be done using a, a shape file or an iso xml file um and we also have a uh, very thorough instructions as to how to go about um, loading those prescriptions into your displays within your in your sprayers. Um, so um, for for Zarvio, we have a terminal checks page that you'll be able to navigate to, and this will be able to uh, give you those instructions that you'll be able to uh, print off or take with you as you go out to the cab um, to be able to utilize our prescriptions. Okay, one other one I think here. Um, does uh, field manager document all of my spraying tasks? Um, yes. So the way field manager works is it actually collects all the information that you uh, that you you do throughout the year is all collected within field manager. Um, so any of the spraying tasks that you perform, um, you'd be it would be documented within um, the field manager platform. So it'll it'll show you what product you used, the rate you used, the date that you applied it. Um, so from a documentation perspective, uh, field manager does a great job of, of uh, recording all of that. And at the end of season or the end of summer or even just for an individual field, you can download um, field uh, reports with that will give you the breakdown of all these different um, uh, uh, numbers and attributes that you'd be able to then keep track of and document on your own. Um, you would also have the ability to uh, export all of that type of information and data into an Excel spreadsheet format. If you would like to do any from a number keeping perspective, you'd be able to utilize that as well. All right. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. That looks like that's uh, all the questions we have for today. And so I want to thank you all for uh, taking the time to to attend the webinar today. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to myself uh, as here listed is my is my email address and my phone number or uh, please reach out to Zarvio. Uh, Canada customer support as well, and uh, we'll be able to answer any questions and uh, give you any further guidance that you may be looking for within the Zarvio Field Manager platform. Um, and with that, uh, I wish you all a safe and successful uh, rest of your uh, your season here, and uh, wish you all the best. And thank you very much for attending today.